While the Federal Reserve watches the still strong labor market, other economic signals are flashing a slowdown. Apollo Global Management Chief Economist Torsten Slock says, quote, this inflation episode will soon be over. He joins me now. Uh, Torsten, thanks so much for coming. Uh, and, and that bold statement, I think, will be music to a lot of people's ears. Um, let's start with what we just saw on uh, Friday with the jobs numbers and then some other data points last week, I think, also suggest that the economy is starting to slow finally. Yeah, this week we did have a number of economic data that suggesting that the economy is beginning to slow down. We got early this week ISM for the manufacturing sector was now below 50, meaning that's in recession because that's the reading where that indicator is at the other side of growth. We also got ISM for services that was also lower than expected, meaning both the manufacturing sector and the service sector is slowing down. We also got data for job openings, which was also a bit worse than expected. And then we got the employment report, which was bit worse than in the last few months, but it was still reasonably strong. Wage inflation is coming down, but job growth is still at 236,000, reasonably strong. So the economy is gradually slowing down up to this point. So you wrote an interesting uh, piece that landed in my inbox about how some sense that some uh, parts of the economy are much more sensitive to interest rate increases, which makes sense. Um, but certain jobs, you don't really feel it for a long time. Initially, when the Fed began to raise interest rates in March of last year, you began to see the interest rate sensitive parts of the economy slow down. And the interest rate sensitive parts that slowed down was housing, because that requires financing. It was the auto sector, because when you buy a car, that also requires financing. And it was business spending, because spending by businesses also requires financing. Financing. So those sectors responded quite quickly. The issue is that they only make up about 20% of GDP. So 80% of GDP, which is you and me going to restaurants, flying on airplanes, staying at hotels, that's not as sensitive to interest rates. So that's why there's a sequencing in which parts of the economy, and for that matter, which parts of the stock market, are impacted first by interest rates going up. And it just turns out to be the case that now is literally 12 months ago since the Fed started hiking rates, and it's just taking a bit longer than what. But I would have expected in terms of getting the economy to slow down. But we see the data this week. The economy is slowing. So we're getting to the point where that slowdown is starting to really work. Another thing that the Fed is watching is wages. And there was a concern that, that you know, if people get paid more, then they'll pay more higher prices. Companies will raise prices, that, that wage price spiral. Are we seeing some signs that that's cooling a little bit? Yeah, so the data we got also was that the employment report showed that last month, meaning in February, non farm payroll, would they also measure average hourly earnings, meaning wages. And wages were 5%. And the data that came out today is now 4.2. So there is a fairly significant decline over the last several months in wage inflation. We're still at a level that's still relatively elevated compared to where we were at like more two and a half percent before the pandemic. But wage inflation is beginning to come down, partly because of immigration. We've had an increase of four million people joining the U.S. economy from abroad over the last two and a half years. So there's a number of different factors that are helping in creating more jobs, in particular in leisure and hospitality, but also overall helping in assisting the Fed with keeping wage inflation a bit more in check. Two more bits of good news. One, that that um, workforce participation creeped up a little bit. And then it's bad news, but maybe good news in this banking turmoil. It means that lending standards have really ratcheted up less money flowing into the economy. What does all this mean for markets? Yeah, this is very important because if we over the last 12 months, we are really at the moment in the economic data living through first the lagged effects of Fed hikes. The Fed was already raising rates over the last 12 months, and now the economy is beginning to respond to that. But then a few weeks ago with Silicon Valley Bank, we added on top of that slowdown a regional banking crisis where the banking sector, of course, now, as you're saying, is beginning to pull back gradually in terms of lending. We just don't know how much lending standards will be tighten. But the big picture for markets here is that the economy was already in the process of slowing down. And if you add on top of that a banking crisis, that just increases the risk that the slowdown could be faster. OK, so what do you do as an investor? Well, the way to look at this is that the consensus expects that for the next three quarters, GDP growth will basically be zero. So that's very important for investors, in particular for the S&P 500, when you think about markets, because at the moment, if the expectation is that GDP growth is going to be essentially zero over the next two, three quarters, that means that we will have zero growth in consumption, zero growth in capex, meaning business spending, and zero growth in hiring, essentially. There are some demographic reasons why it could be a little bit higher or a little bit lower if you have weaker growth in some 
some quarters, namely in the third quarter, as the expectation is. But the answer to your question is, investors should prepare for a slow growth environment and even no growth environment. And that is setting up us for some downside risks to the economic data over the coming months. Okay, uh, one more question for you, which is, I have you here in six, eight, 12 months. Uh, what are you gonna see through your crystal ball then? Yeah, but this is a very important question because all the things we have talked about so far is really about the very near term. If we ask the question, well, what might the world look like in six, nine, 12 months? We should all be completely aware that the things that we're talking about today, it will blow over. Inflation will not be the problem in 12 months time that it is today. We will not have interest rates in 12 months time at these levels that we're having today. We will not have a regional banking crisis in 12 months time like we have today. So investors should take this opportunity and say both in private markets and in public markets and say, what are the opportunities around these issues and these shocks that we're facing at the moment, in particular in private credit and private equity, there's a lot of opportunities at the moment because if you wait with investing until inflation is back at the Fed's target of 2% until we know that we did or did not have a recession, markets will at that point will be a lot higher. It'll be too late by then. Uh, Torsten Slack, you pack a lot in. Thanks so much for your energy. Thanks for having me.